Welcome and what is up there everybody this is Casper Trader back here with another video today and in today's video we will be doing a portfolio review showing guys how our portfolio has performed over the last two weeks and in this video I'm excited to announce a few ideas that I have going for this Robinhood portfolio of mine and a kind of channel a kind of challenge I want to host on my YouTube channel. So make sure to stay to the end where I'm going to be mentioning all these challenges and going through all the stocks that I'm looking at buying and selling in the upcoming weeks. So before we get into the video, I'd really appreciate you guys could smash that like button below and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you guys have not yet. I'd really appreciate it a ton. All right, guys, so getting into the video, as you can see, our portfolio today is around, down around 0.5%. Four or five percent, which isn't too bad. And if we take a look at the last week, we're down four point one percent. So we are down a decent amount in the last week, around four hundred and sixty dollars. But if you look at the last month, we're actually up nine point six percent, or nine hundred and sixty dollars. And then the three months, we're up two percent, two point nine. And last year, we're up nine point four percent. And then all time, we on we are unfortunately still in the red we did go over break even for a little bit just one day but unfortunately we dropped below that once again but hopefully in the next few days we'll be able to rebound and continue growing in the green so the current stocks that i'm holding are basically the same that i've been holding for the last few weeks but there are a few stocks that i'm looking to buy and sell in my portfolio but before i get into all of that i want to first mention the channel challenge ideas that i was thinking of so there were two ideas I specifically had for challenges we could do with this channel and with my Robinhood portfolio. So the first one is to do a three stock portfolio where I choose three high potential, high growth stocks that have the potential to maybe 5x, 10x in the next, I don't know, five to 10 years. Hopefully, I mean, if, if they do like three, four X, I won't be complaining, but that would be the goal to invest in a very concentrated and focused portfolio where I only focus on a set amount of stocks and just try to focus on these stocks as much as possible and research the most I can to find the best stocks that'll give me the best returns and then update you guys on my journey on that through this YouTube channel. Or the second idea I was having is to take a certain amount of money, maybe not all this $10,000, but I'd invest a few thousand and the only way I can make money from it is by selling puts and selling calls, basically making money from premiums on options. So if you guys are interested in any of these challenges and have anyone in specific or have any of your own ideas, please let me know in the comment section below which kind of these challenges would you like me to post on this channel because I'm looking to make something more exciting and entertaining for you guys. All right, since we got that out of the way, uh, I want to show you guys the stocks that I'm holding right now. So my main, my main holdings are near the top usually in my portfolio, but recently the biggest holding in my portfolio has actually been TQQQ. And this stock I've been profitable on and I've been in the loss on by a lot. At a certain point, I was down over $700 on this one triple leverage stock. But now we're down $216, which isn't too bad. But again, it's $216 or $217 now or even more. But yeah, I'm definitely looking to get rid of this. I definitely did learn my lesson of do not buy and hold triple leverage stocks. It will not do good to you. So what I'm looking to do is get back to the mild profit break even point where I think I'd exit if um, it bounces back to around the $155, $160 area. And hopefully that'll be within the next few weeks. I'll be able to sell this, get that out of there, and then have capital free, like around $2,000, maybe $400 free in order to maybe sell some credit spreads or, uh, I mean, buy some credit spreads or sell some puts to make some money on the side. So that'll be a little bit interesting with the extra money, what we can do. But we also are going to show go over the biggest holdings that I have in my portfolio that are more long-term, because that's more of a swing trade that I was doing. So I wouldn't really count as a long-term position. So what we have here is Apple. We're up $250 on Apple. Apple's been trading us pretty well. We're up 27% on it, around $255. I only invested $929 into it and now we're sitting at $1,180. So yeah, we've definitely been able to profit a decent amount off this stock. And I just see this stock continuing to rise in the future. And that's why I, if I were to buy any stocks in the near future, I'd probably invest in Apple 
And how I would do that is through fractional shares just averaging in. I wouldn't go in bulk and be like, I'm going to buy five shares of Apple right now. I would rather do something like I'd buy $50 of Apple here, $20 of Apple here, whenever it's on a dip. Like right now, it's actually on a dip and I might be looking to buy it after this video. So that's what we got with Apple. Um, Facebook has also been doing really well for us and we're actually up $194 on it or 21%. Facebook is just one of those stocks I'm planning on buying and holding for a very long time. I think it has a really good stance in where it is in its industry with the online advertising, I guess you can call it, where Facebook owns, first of all, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, they have these huge platforms where billions of people literally use every day. And they're able to sell ad space on their pro platforms and make money that way. So they almost have like a monopoly. Like the biggest competitors they have is probably Snapchat and TikTok and maybe Twitter. I can't even think of many more ideas. But yeah, they definitely have a really good positioning in the market and the industry that they're in. So I think they're going to completely be dominating in the next few years. Well, next years to come for sure. And then we got some Microsoft, which I'm not even going to click on because we haven't really changed our position on this in a while. But hey, we made $105 on it, so I'm definitely not complaining. And what I'm doing with Microsoft is simply just taking the dividends I make from it and reinvesting, reinvesting them back into my Microsoft position. So I get that little bit of a snowball going on with my money. And then Tesla, which is actually our biggest long term position, uh, we're currently up 10% on or $160. So today it's down $2 or around $36 for us. And with Tesla, it also did have a little bit of a dip, which may or may not mean I'm gonna buy a little bit more later today after hours. Um, Cause I really like to buy stocks on a dip. I've learned my lesson buying them. Just when I've seen stocks going up and up and up nonstop. And the time I usually happen to get in is at the very peak. Um, so now I've learned to wait for dips in the market and then buy. Um, because if you're chasing stocks, that will never do you well. Maybe one in a 10 chance that, that'll do you well. But I'm not a financial advisor. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Make sure to do your own due diligence and make your own decisions when investing. But that's just my personal experience. Amazon. So I have a little bit to say about Amazon because recently, I think it's one of these companies that I personally see evolving really quickly and growing and scaling very fast. So even around my area, I've seen a lot of Amazon buildings coming up. Um, and if you order a product, like I recently ordered something, it comes sometimes even a few days earlier if it's a longer shipping time. But if you have Amazon Prime and there's certain like products that you're buying with Amazon Prime, you're gonna get that product in like two days, only two days. So a lot of people are slowly shifting to buying things on Amazon. And since Amazon now owns, owns Whole Foods, you can now also order groceries online and with all this whole illness stuff going on, uh, Amazon is really evolving and growing their business because people are just not really willing to go to stores in person. So they're using something like Amazon to buy their products. And I currently have a nice position in this stock, around $500 invested in it. And what I'm planning on doing with this stock is just buying and holding, maybe adding a little more here and there. But right now, I'm comfortable with my position. Um, it really has a good rating on Robinhood, so that's definitely a good sign. But yeah, overall, what my plan with Amazon is, is just to buy and hold because I see this company definitely growing in the future. I don't see it growing maybe as fast as some other stocks out of my portfolio, which will be going on over a little bit later. But I definitely do see a lot of growth in this company. So that's what we got going on with Amazon. Then we've got Nexair Energy. And Nexair Energy is actually one of those stocks that I really was looking to sell a few weeks ago. And the reason for that is that it's basically been standing in place like since the last nine months, nine to 10 months. It's just been standing in place, not moving at all. And then I see this little bump happen and I'm so happy I didn't sell. In the beginning of August, I saw the stock slowly start to shoot up. Like I had a pretty big run up where it went from like $275 per share up to $305 per share. So it's definitely grown a little bit. And currently on this stock, we're up 26% or around $137. And what we're doing with this, just like Microsoft, we're taking all of our dividends. And this stock actually pays a pretty nice dividend of 1.78%. I'm taking those dividends and then putting them back into my position to grow it even more. 
So that's my plan with Nexair Energy. I don't know if I'm willing to sell it right now because it's just proven to me that I can continue to grow like it has been for the next for the last five years. So I think I'm gonna have this in my portfolio as more of a hold. And what what else we got here? We got some Skyworks, which has also been doing pretty well for us, um, consistently growing. AMD, a stock that I just bought for fun because I see it was I saw it was growing extremely quickly, and I happened to double my money on it. It wasn't much. I put in like thirty nine dollars, and now it's worth like eighty or so. So that's a pretty nice investment for me. Everyone would wish that they got more, like at the time that they bought. And I guess I would say the same for myself. But you can never complain as long as you are in the profit, which I'm happy to say I am, with AMD at least. CCL, Revolve, and IAU have all been doing okay for us. Like Those are some smaller positions that my I have in my portfolio. And if I were to do the three stock portfolio thing, I'd definitely have them probably eliminated from my portfolio. And I'd focus on just a select few amount of stocks, which may or may not be AMD or some other stocks near the bottom of my list um, to see a lot of growth in. Lemonade is a stock that I actually bought for from one of Chicken Genius Singapore's videos. If you guys ever watch his videos, I love that guy. He makes really good videos on stock market investing and he has a specific investing strategy that I personally really, I think is a good strategy and I really like it. And that strategy is basically to invest in innovative companies that are doing something completely different than everyone else. For example, Lemonade, what they're doing is they're basically the new, I don't know what to compare it with, but it's basically an insurance company that allows you to do almost everything. Actually, I think it is everything just straight from your phone compared to what every other insurance company is doing right now is they have huge buildings, employees, all that kind of stuff that has a huge overhead and this might be the new thing for insurance who knows may or may not be that's why i only bought two shares because i don't want to go so heavy into this if it's not yet a super like proven stock so i'm just happy holding on to what i have for the next months or even years to come we already went over tqqq the stock that lost us right now 233 dollars and here we're going down to the stocks that I see a lot of potential in. And if I were to make the three stock portfolio, I would definitely consider some of these stocks. So first one is Upwork. Upwork has been doing absolutely phenomenal for us. We first invested into this stock like in the beginning of, actually the end of August it looks like we invested a, a large chunk of what we have. Yeah, we invested our first time into Upwork on August 27th, so that's like, that's like, um, I, I don't know why I can't count right now, but it's like two months, yeah. Two months from now, and those two months, this stock has absolutely exploded. It went from like $14 per share, or even less at some points, up to nearly $21 per share. Right now, it's sitting at $20.60 per share, and it just continues to keep growing. It had this huge run-up, and that's why I'm a little bit scared right now to buy it, because I'm already up 40%, so it's like, how much higher can it go? I definitely see Upwork as maybe like a $30, $40 stock, but since it's already run up this much, I may be looking to invest in some other companies that haven't yet had their run up and still have a lot of uh, potential ahead of them. So Upwork, definitely love this stock. I'm not sure if I'm going to be buying more of it though, because I'm already up so much on it. Not saying it can go up more though. Uh, we have ArcG, which I bought um, when I sold my share of Illumina and this stock has been doing really well for us. We made 17% in just a few months Yeah, again end of August is when I was buying this and Since then the two months a little less than two months. I've been able to make 16% It's just one of these ETFs that I'm interested in the industry But I'm not exactly sure which stocks to invest in so I might as well invest in the ARK ETF of it Which is performing pretty well as of now and then one of my biggest potential stocks are near the bottom here but we're gonna get to that in a second uh, i just wanted to mention lulu is also one of those stocks that i'm kind of buying for fun um i have in one of my other portfolios where i'm just playing around a little bit and it's been doing really well for me i bought it over a year ago and since then it's grown by like at least 30%. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's grown a lot. And that's what I was kind of looking to do with this position. But right after I invested, the whole stock decided to collapse. And like I invested back up here and the stock decided to collapse down like $100 per share almost. And now it's slowly making its way back up. 
But now moving on to the two stocks that I do see a lot of potential in, and that's Dropbox and Upwork. Oh, uh, not Upwork, my bad, and Slack. So Dropbox is, I currently have a Dropbox port, uh, position of $250, and Dropbox has lost us around 5% or $12. And many people will see, oh man, dang it, I lost $12 or oh, I lost 5%. But what I see this as is, wow, I have a bigger opportunity to buy more shares at a lower price. Where right now this company, I'm at a lower, it's at a lower price than I was initially buying it at. So I'd rather buy, slowly start buying into a company as it's maybe falling or consolidating. Maybe not catching like a falling knife where a stock is dropping like crazy. But I'm happy to always buy a stock at a lower price if I still see a lot of potential in the company. Especially if it's something like this where it goes down 5%, then I'm definitely comfortable in buying more of it. And Dropbox, I want to I want to cre increase my Dropbox position in this account. Um, probably buy at least $100, $200. Because I've seen Jeremy's videos about it, and he really did convince me. I don't know if it was just his good... Um, good uh talking skills or if this was just actually how great the company is but i do believe that dropbox has a really bright future ahead of them and they do have the potential to grow a lot in the next upcoming years and it has a pretty good risk to reward ratio so i think that i'm going to invest more money into dropbox over the upcoming weeks especially since i'm down on it right now so i'm comfortable putting more money into it it's not like one of those stocks like upwork where i'm already up 40 percent on it it's kind of hard to put more money in at that point and just to let you guys know the way that i invest is i try to take a lot of information from different sources and just kind of collect that in my own head and in my own thoughts because i know that a lot of people have their own opinions on stocks and i think it's better to um, not just focus on one person because if you focus on one person that one person may be wrong but if you take information from a lot of people with different perspectives on the stock market and different stocks you're able to create and format your own opinion and your own idea of what's a good investment and what isn't and that's the sort of strategy that i'm going for and that's why i've been mentioning these other people who talk about stocks for those who are wondering and i'm slowly just creating my own way of investing in my own personal preference of what i look for in stocks in order to invest in them so yeah now going over the last stock we've got slack right here and slack is down a lot today around five percent but fear no more we're actually up still like 18 percent on this which i'm not complaining about around 14 dollars. i only invest 78 dollars into this stock but boy has it made us money and right now i think i might increase this position just by a little bit might buy one or maybe two shares of it um, but right now I see that it's a little bit of a, at a price where it peaked out like it has previously in the previous years, uh, many times. So I think that the stock might be a little bit of a better op buying opportunity in the next upcoming weeks. If it does continue its pattern, because of course stocks never have to continue patterns. It's just the way that they might go again. So that's what I'm doing with Slack. I might buy one or two more shares, but not too much more. And... Yeah, so those are basically the stocks that we invested in. But I did want to go over my crypto investment because I don't really mention this a lot because I don't see this as as much of an exciting topic as stocks. But I did invest $470 into Bitcoin back a few months ago. Not, not exactly sure when. Um, but yeah, I did invest around $470 and I bought it at the price of nearly $9,000 per Bitcoin. And since then, this has increased by 32% for us, which is actually really good and it's no upwork but it's definitely a good return for the last few months and i've been i've grown 470 dollars up to one 600 and four, 624 dollars or around 150 dollars in profit um just investing in bitcoin and bitcoin is not one of those investments that i i'm like 100 percent gonna go into i'm selling selling all my stocks right now buying bitcoin i'm not one of those guys um what i really want to do with bitcoin is I do see where people are coming from when they discuss Bitcoin and like how it might potentially be a $100,000, $200,000 like cost for it. Like Bitcoin might be worth that much. But I also see the perspective of people who are totally anti-Bitcoin and they're like, this is never going to grow up to be like the main currency that people are all around the world use. But I found myself a happy medium where I invested nearly $500 into it. And I don't care if it's going to go down to maybe four thousand dollars per bitcoin or if it's going to go up to a hundred thousand dollars per bitcoin 
of course i'd rather it go to a hundred thousand dollars per bitcoin and i'll make like a few grand if if and ever if that happens but i'm just happy investing what i have right now and it's sort of like one of those investments where i make where I'm basically like protecting myself against not being part of a big movement. Like if Bitcoin does have another rally, I'm gonna be part of it, but I'm not gonna be 100% invested in it just in case it goes down. And since Bitcoin's not a stock and you can't be like, oh, this stock is profitable in the last quarter, oh, it's doing well, it's been increasing revenue, blah, 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 blah. Bitcoin's just a currency and you can't really see all that kind of stuff on it because it doesn't have those types of things. I guess <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it correctly and how to phrase it better but that's my basically basic explanation for it so I'm currently happy with what I have in Bitcoin not looking to add more um, but we'll just see where this goes and where Bitcoin takes us so those are all the stocks that I've been holding in our portfolio I didn't mention that the stocks I want to buy are a little bit of um, Dropbox uh, work and work meaning slack and a little bit of Tesla which I didn't really mention um, I really want to buy a little bit more of Tesla, maybe get this position up to $2,000, whether that's by the stock growing that much or for me adding that much more to my portfolio. But I do really see Tesla as a really big um, part of the car industry. Like it has so much potential to grow and it almost has like a monopoly over the electrical car space. It's not the only electrical car and I'm completely aware of that. But it does have a lot more experience and a lot more data and a lot more statistics on it. So I feel like it's ahead of the game in its own industry. So that's basically our portfolio for you guys. Make sure to leave a comment down below talking about the strat, mentioning which strategy or which challenge you'd like me to do on this channel with my Roundhood portfolio. I'd be happy to hear that. And thank you guys all so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.